What's up, YouTube family? Welcome to the Link Up Church online experience. We're so glad you've chosen to tune in. Before we jump into today's video, we want to remind you that this channel isn't just for adults. We have content for babies in the Little Linkland section, kids in the Linked Up Kids section, and relevant services for your teenagers from the plug. So grab the whole family because we're about to get started. Be sure to subscribe to this channel so you never miss a video from us. And don't forget to share this video with someone who needs to hear an encouraging message. Let's jump in. The title of the message is Connect 21. We're going to look at Matthew's Gospel, Chapter 6. There are three important responsibilities in almost every faith around the world. But they were particularly important to the ancient uh, Judaism laws and rules. They were sometimes called the three pillars of Judaism. So let's take a look at these three pillars to see what Jesus says about each one of them and how we as his followers should really look to it and how they apply to us today. I want to give you some key words and definitions before we actually look at the text. Uh, one key word I want to give you is secret. When you see the word secret in the text today, it is a Greek word, kruptos, and it means concealed, private, hidden, or inward. We're also going to see a word a lot today called reward. The Greek word there is epididomi, and it means to give away or back, repayment, recompense, requit, restore, yield, or to be paid in full. How I many know anything that you do for God, God pays it back to you in full? That's right. Right? That's right. And then we're going to look at the word openly. Openly comes from two Greek words, two different Greek words. The first one is in, spelled E-N, and it means a fixed position outwardly or quickly. So in other words, when God rewards you, he's going to set you into something and he's going to do it quickly, and he's going to do it openly. For some of you all, you won't even get that far into this year when you see the hand of God move into your life. That's right. Oh, somebody should have received that right, right. there. That's right. And he's going to do it quickly, and everyone will see it because of your private devotion. That's right. Then the word phaneros means shining, apparent, publicly, manifest, be known. You won't have to say anything about it because it'll be clear to everyone else that only God could have done that in your life. I don't know about you, but I need things in my life that make it real clear that I am a child of God and no one else could have done that for me but God. That's right. Somebody needs to get ready for some but God moments. <laughs> I said somebody needs to get ready for some but God moments. I'm talking about one day your life was going one way, then but God showed up and everything turned. I'm believing that for some things personally in my life. That in reality, I cannot do anything about it by myself. That's right. If God doesn't get involved, it is a lost cause. And I'm trusting him for a but God moment. Can we just thank God in advance for some but God moments? Yes. I'm talking about some suddenly, some quicklies, where it manifests and it appears not just to us, but to everyone watching that God did that for us. That's right. That's right. So now let's talk about these three pillars. Now, these three pillars are three activities he mentioned that the Jewish people practiced, but that was descended upon us as Christians, right? And the first pillar is giving in secret. Giving in secret. Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 through 4 in the Passion. It says, examine your motives to make sure you're not showing off when you do your good deeds, only to be admired by others. Otherwise, you will lose the reward of your heavenly Father. So when you give to the poor, don't announce it. And don't make a show of it to be seen by people like the hypocrites in the streets, in the marketplace. They've already received their reward. But when you demonstrate generosity, do it with pure motives and without drawing attention to yourself. Give secretly and your father who sees all you do will, will reward you openly. Now, the key two words is, are motives and when. 
Okay. W H E N. Motive and when. Remember, as Christians, everything we do, we he, our first commandment is to love our God with all of our heart, mind, and soul. So he says, when we do what we do, we must do it for God. This is nothing new to you. That's right. But see, it's so subtle, even in our giving, how we can do that sometimes with an expectation of a man's, uh, man's recognition. You know, when you gave that big amount and they turned around and asked you to be a part of the board. You know, when you gave that big amount and you thought you had authority to say what you should be doing with the money. You, you, you know how that can go. When, when, when you gave something and then they, didn't, they turned around and didn't even acknowledge your giving, you were offended and said, I'll never give to them again. <laughs> motives, motives. <laughs> motives. But then the win. The win is that establishes that God expects us to be participants in these activities. And the first one we're talking about is giving. The first pillar Jesus addresses is that of giving, and he shows us that there's a wrong way to give and there is a right way to give. And each of these, we're going to talk a little bit about the wrong and the right way. Now, how many of you have a nice, nice, nice six or eight pack of abs? Two. Two pack. One pack. Some of y'all are like, I have a nice six pack or eight pack of Coca-Cola. <laughs> I want you to remember that because, you know, even with those with, you know, nobody in here raised their hands, so praise God, we're going to believe that you're getting there, right? <laughs> so I would dare to say that no one in here is very anxious or very excited about walking around with no shirt on or a crop top on. You are not hitting the stores looking for crop top sports bras and no shirt outfits, right? <laughs> and even if you had a great set of abs, you're not showing up just anywhere all the time with no shirt on or a crop top on, right? Yeah, go to work with no shirt on. <laughs> go to the restaurant with no shirt on, right? <laughs> abs, why am I talking about that? Just remember that when you are doing these activities, these Christian activities, you want to be sure that though you might have a nice set of abs, you're not always looking to display it. What does abs, it's an acronym. Your appearance, your behavior, and your speech. That's good. Your appearance, your behavior, and your speech. In each one of these, Jesus addresses our appearance, our behavior, and our speech. Good. So, let's talk about the first part, the wrong way to give. The wrong way to give, we say here, the wrong motives, showing off, being admired by other people, you lose the reward from the Father and the admiration becomes your reward. Of course, God is into giving us what we are motivated to get, right? There is a work reward system that's just in the earth. Right. It is a seed time and harvest system. So if our motive is to be admired by people, guess what? That's what we get. But if your giving is stoked, is motivated by the desire to please God, then he is obligated to reward. So what Jesus is saying here, don't be like the hypocrites. The hypocrite word there is a Greek word that just basically denotes someone who's wearing a mask. Someone who's just basically out there pretending to be righteous, but really they're not. Really they're not. And so he's admonishing us to not be like hypocrites, people who are out there giving on the, only under the auspice of being able to gain something, not from God, but from man. So, you know, sometimes we go too far left, and we don't want to put our, I don't know if you ever came from this, I, I, I went to a church one time, it's, I'm not bashing churches, but, you know, the only way you could give is you had to stand up and go around the entire building and put your envelope in one bucket that was right here. And it was about, probably about a good 800 people in that building. Yeah, I come from those where there was a $100 line, $500 line, I think $50 line. Everybody else stayed seated. The only ones that could come forward was the big givers. And when Jesus was watching those that were giving, what did he say? It was the woman, the widow, that gave the might, that gave the most, because she, because she gained from the depths of her heart. So when we give, be careful not to give for the applause and the recognition of man. You know where your heart is when, there is no, when no one knows that you gave. 
and you're not upset about it. Mm -hmm. Jesus is also demonstrating a, a sense of humor here because he says in the King James Version, he says when the trumpets don't go out there expecting, acting like the religious people do. Mind you, he's talking about his own people and they're expecting for trumpets to be blown. Of course, no one's out there da, 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 blowing trumpets. That was terrible. Oh. But ne nevertheless, oh. you know what I mean. Don't do that again. Don't do that again. <laughs> Jesus is basically saying you don't need a big pomp and circumstance in your giving. Don't be like the religious folks that wants all type of recognition in their giving and they want people to know that, yes, I wrote a swelling check. Yes, look at me. And I'm going to walk up and I'm going to have trumpets blown and I'm going to walk up the center of the aisle and say, there you go. No, Jesus is not interested at all in that. In fact, he says, if that's what you want, you That's got it, reward. baby. That's, That's what you get. The right way to give. I'm just going to leave it right here. Do it with pure motives. Don't, don't draw attention to yourself. Give secretly, and the Father rewards you openly. Simple and plain in Matthew chapter eight, the be, uh, Matthew chapter 5 and the Beatitudes. I love the way the Passion Translation says it in verse 8. He says, what bliss you experience when your heart is pure. For then your eyes will open to see more and more of God. Amen. The right way to give without going into a whole bunch of words is to do it because for one reason only, and that is to please God. And when he says he will reward you openly, yeah, other people will recognize it. Other people will see the fruit of your life. Other people wonder why you got the contract and they didn't. Why did you get the promotion they did? Why did you get the bid on the house and they didn't? Why did someone do that for you and they didn't do it for them? Why do you walk in supreme favor? That's when God says, that's my reward, baby boy. That's my reward, baby girl, because you do what you do for me. And you put me on obligation when you do it like that. That's good. Excellent. That's good. And so during this fast, we will have an opportunity to give to those that are less fortunate than us. And I am excited about it. Let me try over here. During this 21 days of prayer and fasting, let me try online. I believe online is fired up today. We will have an opportunity to give and make an impact in lives that can't do anything for us. Yep. They don't go to this church. Hello, somebody. We're not looking for a return on investment. We're just trying to show the love of God to people who need it. Can I get five people to get excited about that? Can't wait to tell you about it. And you know what? Pillar number some, two. For, let me say that. I'm just led to say this. For some people, we've been very comfortable in convenient giving. We've been comfortable in giving out of what's convenient. For some people... For some people, and if this hits you where, where in, your, in your gut, then let the Holy Spirit deal with it because he told me to say this. For some people, it's easier for you to write a check than to give of your time. And God may require you to do a little bit of both. For some of you, you will give your time all day long, but don't touch, with your, don't touch your bank account. And, that's, and you think that you're more than compensating for God, doing for God. No, he sees your heart. So there might be for some of you, for you to step out of your comfort zone and get your hands dirty. Just so you can have a dose of people, human reality. But for some of you, it might require you to give in a way resource-wise that you hadn't given before because you're wondering why your service is so great but your reward is so small. It's good. Check your motives. It's good. I love you. That's good. Now, I won't spend a lot of time here because we're getting ready to talk about prayer for the next 21 days. But prayer or the second pillar is praying in secret, praying in secret. Let's read verses five through eight of Matthew chapter six from the Passion Translations. It says, whenever you pray, the New King James Version and the King James Version says when you pray. So notice the commander in chief has an expectation that all believers have a prayer life. Mm-hmm. It's probably a challenge to believe that someone is a Christian and does not pray. That's like a car without a motor. How many know it's not a car if it doesn't have a motor? Right? A Christian does what? Prays. And they pray often. He says, whenever you pray, 
Be sincere and not like the pretenders who love the attention they receive while praying. So notice the pretender loves praying, but it tells you why they love praying. For the attention that they receive from the people as they pray, right? Notice what he goes on to say. They love doing this while praying before others in the meetings and on the street corners. Believe me, they have already received in full their reward. But whenever you pray, somebody say, I pray. pray. Say, I pray. pray. Type that in online. Say, I'm a prayer warrior. I'm a prayer warrior. Notice, when you pray, go into your innermost chamber and be alone with the Father God. Praying to him in secret, and your Father who sees all you do will reward you openly. So notice what he says here. When you come to me in private, I'll make sure that what you came to me about in private, everybody sees it publicly. Isn't that good? Mm. Notice this, verse 7. When you pray, there is no need to repeat empty phrases, praying like those who don't know God, for they expect God to hear them because of their many words. There is no need to imitate them, and I love the ending of this verse 8. Since your father already knows what you need before you ask him. So if you understand what he's saying there, you don't need to be eloquent. You just need to be specific. Right? Now, the second pillar that Jesus addresses in this section is prayer. And once again, he defines for us that there is a wrong way to pray and there is a right way to pray. Letter A, what is the wrong way that he outlines? Not being sincere. For attention from other people. Meaningless repetition. The attention of other people becomes that individual's full reward. One way to always monitor and check yourself on this is your private prayer life should be far greater than your public prayer life. The only time you pray should not be on Saturday mornings. Most of your prayer time should be private and should be alone between you and God. But I mean, you know, there are times when we need to come together corporately. But even in those corporate settings, you can walk around and pray. Just make sure your motive for walking around is not to be seen. And I mean, you know, you don't need to explain that to other people because that's between you and God. You don't have to worry about other people attempting to judge you because that's not their business. You just know why you do what you do. So continue to do what you do. Just make sure you're doing it for God. Now, let's look at the right way to pray, letter B, in secret. What does that mean to you all? In secret. What does that mean? Talk to me real quick. In secret. We kind of told you, but, but let me hear. What does that mean? Hidden. Hidden, right? In private, right? So I want to encourage you all during these 21 days, get a place that just is yours. It's not for my husband. It's not for my wife. It's not for the kids. Get a place where you privately go to meet God. What you're going to find is after you get in the routine of that, God will meet you there. And it'll, be, it'll become a special place between you and God where you all get together. Mm-hmm. And stuff will happen in that place. So in secret, private, and alone with the Father. And then this is a promise from God himself. The Father will reward you openly. So I want to challenge you during these 21 days. Get some space in your house that is just yours. And you and God spend time for the next 21 days there together. Pillar number three. That's right. Pillar number three, fasting in secret. Fasting in secret. Matthew chapter 6, verse 16 through 18 in the Passion says, When you fast, don't look like those who pretend to be spiritual. They want everyone to know they're fasting. So they appear in public looking miserable, gloomy, disheveled. Believe me, you've all, they've already received their reward in full. So when you fast, don't let it be obvious, but instead wash your face, groom yourself, and realize that you, 
that your father in the secret place is the one who's watching you, all that you do in secret, and will again reward you openly. Now, so far we've looked at giving in secret, we've looked at praying in secret, and now we come to this third pillar, fasting in secret. And again, God expects us to fast. He don't say if, right. he says when you fast. Right. So then we're talking about here the right and the wrong way to fast. So, the wrong way to fast. <laughs> Girl, I ain't had a piece of chicken in five days. <laughs> this chicken, is wearing me out. Oh, boy, I can't wait till this fast is over with. Girl, how you doing today? I'm struggling. Oh, I'm going through today because I ain't had uh, McDonald's or whatever. Yeah. So to pretend, the wrong way to fast is pretending to be spiritual, wanting everyone to know. In public, they look miserable, gloomy, disheveled for other, in front of other people, and that becomes their reward. And even some, I added this part, because I've, I've been guilty of it, but I've also been the victim of it. Some even use it as an excuse for their sour, nasty, or mean disposition. I'm hungry. Uh, you know, there's a term out there, and I think it's going to make it to the dictionary, called hangry. <laughs> How many of you know, don't mess with me when I'm hangry. I, 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 that can happen. And so if we are focused on our flesh, we can let that just totally disrupt our, our, our abs, our appearance, our behavior, and, uh, as well as our speech. So we have to be careful to keep that in check and not do it for what's outside of us, but make sure we're keeping ourselves astute. If no one knew that we were fasting, guess what? That pleases God. Luke chapter 16, verse 15, I love what it says here. Now, Jesus is addressing and rebuking some of the, the Pharisees, and he says, so Jesus addressed them directly. You always want to look spiritual in the eyes of others, but you forgot in the eyes of God, which see what's inside of you. The very things that you approve of and applaud are things that God despises. So he's not interested in what we're doing outwardly. He's interested only in what's going on on the inside. One time I went to, I had a lunch appointment and there was a meeting and I, it was with Emmanuel. It was a couple of, a few of us that got together and Emmanuel was the one, I'm buying lunch and we go to somewhere that they picked. Hold on. You <coughs> took them to lunch and you had to treat them? It, it was uh, I will talk after the message. <laughs> Keep going. Keep going. And I'm pressing E. You gonna order something? You gonna order something? What's wrong with you? Because you know, I know if y'all tell me that you're paying, oh, I'm gonna eat. And finally, I, I kept pressing him. And I, he, he, he turned to me and to the side and said, uh, PT, I'm fasting. And I, I respected him all the more. And then I left him alone. So it wasn't that he was trying to keep it a secret. Oh, I can't tell, I can't tell. But just, he was just trying to be honorable in the situation. Yeah. So understand that you're going to fast. And let me tell you, everyone out there online and in this building, there's one thing everybody can fast. There's one thing everybody can fast, and we can all fast together. You want to know what it is? Sugar. Y'all concerned about COVID? Build your immune system. Avoid sugar. You didn't get no amens out there. I know. You could have looked out there. They looked Some of y'all making like, your cake right you must now. must be out of your mind if you think I'm giving up cookies for 21 The right days. way to fast. The right way to fast in secret. Man, it's, it shouldn't be obvious. You can feel it. Look and smell your best. Have the joy of the Lord on the inside of you, knowing that the Father is watching all the time, and he is looking for opportunities to reward you openly because of your inward commitment to him. <clears throat> so good. You all ready to get your abs together? Why don't you go ahead right now and just, just tighten them up, flex them on the inside. Just take Let's get these abs together for the next 21 days. What does abs stand for? Pull your mask down. I can't see. No, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> I can't see your lips moving. It's like I can hear you, but I can't see your lips moving. But Let's, they got it. They got it. Let's get these abs together for the next 21 days, spiritually and physically. Now, how many know we don't fast to lose weight, but I take the benefit of it. Right. I know I'm carrying a little bit too much down here right now. Anybody want to say amen to that? Right. And so this, I look forward to this time of the year, every year. 
Let's go ahead and conclude for today. I have a question for you all. Are you ready to connect with God for 21 days? On a scale of 1 to 10, I'll give that a 4. Online, type in yes, praise hands, give me something. I want everyone to do it. I'm going to ask the question again in the room and online. Type it in online. Give me the response in the room. Are you ready to connect with God for the next 21 days? Yes. I'm ready. Are you a secret Christian? Yes, in this context. When you're you give, opening your beliefs. When you're opening your beliefs, but when you give, you give how? Secret. When you pray, you pray how? Secret. When you fast, you pray how? Fast. I mean, you fast how? So are you a secret Christian yes. in this context? Yes, you are. Say, I'm a secret Christian. Don't type that in because somebody will read that and see that the wrong way. But in the room, you all understand the context, right? It's my motives for why I do what I do. So when it comes to the motivation of your heart, we need to be secret Christians, right? When it comes to the motivation of our hearts, we need to be secret Christians. We all want to be careful that none of our acts of righteousness are done to be seen by men. Now, in a moment, I'm going to do something here, and someone will naturally say, but you just told us publicly what you're doing. And so you told us for personal, that's not my motive for doing it. My motive for doing it is to be an example to you all as a shepherd, as we all rally for a cause. So I wanted to just tell you all early, because I'm actually going to tell you all something that I'm doing, not for personal gain and not for personal glory, but for example purposes. Everybody clear? All right, real good. Let's all stand to our feet in the room. Even online, if you're watching online, let's stand to our feet. I want all of us to lift our hands before the Father. And I don't know if you've ever fasted for 21 days before. I don't know if you're in this room, if you've never done this before. But I want to challenge this entire environment. If you are a member of of Linked Up Church. If you're not a member, but you're a devoted supporter, we want everyone to participate in this 21 days of prayer and fasting. We need God more than ever in our lives right now. How many of y'all would say amen to that? We need God more than ever. If you're waiting on a vaccine, you're too late. If you're trusting in a vaccine, you're too late. If you're waiting on a stimulus check, you're too late. God is our source. God is our supply. And we put all of our trust in him. I want you to give God your undivided attention for the next 21 days and see if he doesn't shape your year to be one of the best years, if not the best year you have ever had in your life. Yes. That's right. In a pandemic. I need somebody to say amen to that. Why am I challenging you today? Because God wants to demonstrate to you that he's greater than politics. He's greater than a pandemic. He's greater than job loss. He's greater than anything this world has to throw at you if you'll give him a chance to be great in your life. That's right. So let's lift our hands to him right now. Father... We love you, we honor you, we adore you. And I'm asking you by the Holy Spirit, Father, that every person that commits to this 21 days of prayer and fasting, I'm asking you to help them keep every goal and commitment that they set for 21 straight days. And as they do it in secret, Father, I am believing and prophesying and praying over their lives that you will do exactly what you said you would do. You will reward them openly, Father. You'll do it quickly, it'll be apparent, and they will shine as lights to a lost and dying world. And Father, we give you all the glory as we dedicate these next 21 days to you. 
We give you all the glory for every healing, every miracle, every job, every debt cancellation, everything good that happens, Father. We give you all the glory for it in advance. In Jesus' name. If you agree with that prayer, just go ahead and shout amen to the Father. <laughs> Praise God. While you're in that attitude of prayer, if you're watching online or maybe you're in the room right now, this is the first Sunday of the new year. Man, what a blessing to see the first Sunday of the new year. But you know what would be a greater blessing? If you gave your heart to God. So if you're watching online or you're in this room and you don't have a personal relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ, I want to pray with and for you today. That's all God wants from you is your heart. He doesn't want anything else. He knows that when he gets your heart, he gets everything else. So if you don't know God, if you don't have a personal relationship with him through Jesus Christ, I want to pray with and for you. Secondarily, you might say, Pastor, I'm saved, but man, 2020 just knocked me out of the race. I, used, I just got away from God. I fell off. And I want to start this new year off right. I want to rededicate. I want to come back to Christ. If that's you today, I want to pray with and for you. So if everyone in the room would do me a favor, everyone watching online, just put your right hand over your heart, and I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe that He died, rose from the grave, and He is alive right now. Lord Jesus, Come into my heart and save me now. As a result of what I've confessed with my mouth and what I believe in my heart, I am right now born again and in right standing with God, and all my sins are forgiven in Jesus' name. Can we just give God a real good praise in here today? Thank you so much for watching our online service. We certainly don't take that for granted. And if you enjoyed today's message and you want to get connected with us, we encourage you to become a part of our online community. That's right. And you can do that by subscribing to our YouTube channel, sharing this video with a friend and following us on social media. Don't forget to meet us right here on this channel every Sunday for our services. If you desire to help us reach more people just like yourself and advance the kingdom of God, then click the Give button now. This will allow us to connect more people to God, their families, their purpose, and their communities. Thank you again for watching our service on today, and we'll, we'll see, see you next week. week.